Okay, so this is the uh, second problem. And uh, in the second problem, you will be given a data set and you will need to create a frequency table, a histogram, frequency polygon, ogive. Uh, the number of the classes you will need to select based on two to the power of k uh, rule. And you will need to calculate percentile. Okay, so let's uh, do some calculations. Uh, let's calculate a uh, number of the elements. Um, so we choose uh, quite straightforward. In this case, it's just 30. Okay, so the maximum. Minimum. Range, so that's uh, maximum minus minimum k based on our 2 to the power of k rule so let's uh, round it up and this is a logarithm of uh, n divided by a logarithm of 2 and up to the closest whole number 5 <clears throat> okay, so the uh, width, let's also round it up. And this is going to be range divided by number of classes up to the closest whole number. Okay, so width is equal to 7. Okay, we can create uh, the histogram. As you remember, we can do it just using the histogram here. Let's maybe call it automatic. Okay, here we have four and we actually need uh, five classes. Okay, so that looks uh, reasonable, but uh, yeah, we can't uh, do anything else with that. So that is why let's uh, create the frequency table. So let's uh, put the lower limits, the upper limits, lower limits. Uh, let's take the minimum, 746, 7. Uh, 46 and uh, the width is 7 so this is equal to 7 46 plus 7 and we drop it down so that's 2 3 4 5 okay so here we will take uh, 752 so we don't have intersection of classes and again here we will take 752 plus Seven. Okay, so those are our upper and lower limits and classes. Let's maybe make those bold as well. Classes uh, will take uh, seven forty six uh, to seven fifty two. Okay, and then here we just press enter copyright. Okay, we have our classes, we have flow limits, up limits, so let's uh, calculate frequencies. Frequencies, and as you remember, so this is uh, an array. Frequency. So this is our data and pins up limits. And then we press Control Shift Enter. Okay, so as you can see here, I have some issues with the formatting. So let's go ahead and right click, format cells, uh, and just take it as the dump. Okay, so those are our frequencies, and we can 
for histogram using the column plot right there and let's maybe call it manual okay so we have one two three four five instead of those uh, we should uh, insert our classes let's right click select data edit Classes here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's eliminate the gaps. Uh, let's maybe generate some boundary. Okay, so that's it. So we have something quite similar to what we have here. Okay, so this is uh, uh, this is good. Uh, we have uh, the uh, the histogram, and now we also have a frequency table, and we can use it, uh, for example, to calculate relative frequencies. Relative frequencies. Okay, and this is equal to frequency divided by number of elements, which is 30. And double click, and again we will format, format cells, and we will set as percentage. So that's what we have. We can uh, build a histogram as well, but it's not going to introduce much of uh, uh, much of the information because uh, we need histogram like, to see the shape of the distribution and we can see it from these two histograms so that is why let's uh, let's uh, build uh, a pie chart so let's insert and that's what we will need to do on the exam as well Okay, again, we need to, to put the classes here. Okay, and we can add some legend. Uh, some data labels. Uh, something like this select end okay and uh, what we can do we can select those and a little bit maybe increase the size and make it let's say white let's maybe put it right here Make it bigger a little bit. Okay, that looks reasonable. That looks reasonable. Okay. Okay, so what is next? So let's uh, let's build uh, OJIF. So that's cumulative frequencies. Okay, so we have uh, four, and then the next one is equal to previous plus next. Okay, and drop down. Let's uh, go ahead and align it in the same way. And uh, what we can do, we can go ahead and do the line and why I like line in this case because here you can create a really good template for OJIF okay so be careful with the x-axis so on the x-axis we should have upper limits 
So this is extremely important. Okay, because uh, OGIF shows us uh, how many elements we have uh, below some level. Yeah, for example, here we have uh, grades. <coughs> uh, here we have grades. And uh, for example, we have uh, 10 students who scored less than 759. Okay. And uh, 18 students, uh, <coughs> oh, sorry, <coughs> 18 students uh, who scored uh, less than 766. 27 less than 773 and uh, 30 less than 780. Okay, so that's what OGF uh, shows. Uh, so it shows percentiles. For example, 80s percentile. So let's uh, see 80s percentile. You know, I'd like to see uh, where 80s uh, percentile is. Uh, uh, we will need to, to do the same, but with the relative cumulative frequencies. Okay, so again, we need uh, to take our cumulative frequencies and divide it by the number of the elements in the data set. And double click and uh, right click. Again, we will format as uh, percent. Not percent, percentage. Okay, and we will do the same. Plot the line. We'll do the same template. Okay, right click, select data. Again, those are upper limits. So okay. Okay. And we can see the same information, but in percent. Okay, so you can see that 60% uh, scored uh, less than 766 uh, seven and 90% scored uh, less than 773. So, yeah, so it's about, uh, what, 770, seven I would say. So the 80th uh, percentile is going to be like 770, something like that. Yeah, we can right away do it and calculate it. 80th uh, percentile. percentile and 80th percentile is it 80th yeah so that's 80th percentile okay so we can calculate it using percentile there are like several percentile functions it doesn't matter which one uh, you use I usually use uh, including the uh, the endpoints of the interval and uh, my array so that's this one right there and percentile 0 0.8 okay 771 so we almost guessed yeah, we almost guessed okay so let's uh, plot frequency polygon and for frequency polygon we will need midpoints midpoints And midpoints, those are our sum of lower limit and the upper limit divided by 2. Okay, yeah, as you can see, 7, uh, 749 is uh, right in the middle in between 746 and 752. Uh, okay, let's double click. Those are our midpoints. And for frequency polygon, uh, we will need to plot the uh, midpoints uh, versus uh, frequencies. Uh, but if you do it, uh, what we are going to see, we are going to see that uh, frequency polygon uh, hanging uh, hanging in the, uh, in the air. And uh, what we will do, so let's maybe set frequency polygon here.
Okay, here we will have, we will have uh, uh, midpoints, uh, and uh, for the uh, for the midpoints, uh, we, we are going like to uh, we are going to uh, use uh, minimum and uh, maximum uh, from like two ends. Okay, that's where we are going to lock our polygon. Okay, so let's uh, use a minimum. Minimum is uh, seven, seven, uh, forty-six, seven, forty-six, and we will lock it with zero. Okay, so then here we will we are going to have midpoints. Uh, let's grab our midpoints. Let's uh, copy and just copy the values. And then here we will have maximum, maximum, and our maximum is uh, 780. 780. Okay, and again we lock it with zero. And then here we will have our frequencies. Let's copy. And values there okay so and then what we will do we will insert scatter plot something like this right there and this is our frequency Okay, so that's uh, that's it, I believe. That's all we need to do for problem number two. So let's save it and uh, let's move to the next problem.